I guess he doesn't really need an introduction. The man, the myth, the legend, Brother Fabio. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Come on up, Brother Fabio. Uh, appreciate your willingness to bring God's word to us today. And okay, now last Sunday, the teens had to stay up here and I got no applause. <laughs> this Sunday, you're up here and they're applauding, but I'm applauding too. Come on, brother. Thank you. I think they feel bad. That's what it is. Thank you so much. Appreciate the prayers. Um, I was supposed to preach last week, but circumstances did not allow that. Um, but uh, through it all, it's interesting because the message I am preaching today felt like God saying, let's make it a little more personal, right? So uh, it's interesting. I really felt like that was in, the, uh, that was in uh, God's plans, but uh, all glory to him. I get uh, sometimes things happen and we don't know why and sometimes we're not going to know why, but we have to put our faith and trust in him. Amen. So we're going to spend this time in Daniel 6. It's going to be a simple, no uh, PowerPoint, so you're going to have to look stare at me the whole time. Uh, no screen. And pretty simple message. It's a message that I wanted to put together for, for a while now. Now, if I speak too slow, I'm not falling asleep. But if I speak too fast, I'm not in a rush. I just can't hear very well off this ear. There's a lot of water in there because there was a lot of swimming this week. So uh, if I'm talking too loud or too low, that's why. Okay, I like starting with uh, some questions. Um, how well do we do when faced with difficult situations? Okay, so... What I want to do is to try to go quickly uh, through Daniel and um, try to pick apart some points and, and ask some questions in between. I really, really like this story. This is one of the most popular stories in the Bible, obviously, uh, Daniel and the uh, lion's den. Uh, so some questions we can ask. How do we do, how well do we do when faced with difficult situations? Or how are we when our faith is put to the test? Okay. And has our faith uh, been put to the test? I mean, there's people in this church that they're very inspirational to me. I'm not going to name them by name, but they have gone through some things and are going through some things. And I look to them for inspiration. It's unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. I remember, uh, um, I'm going to share this one person. She's not here, so I can embarrass her. Um, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, it was before I preached on the Resurrection Sunday. I don't remember. I think it was that day. And it just kind of, it rocked me. So I was speaking to Rosie, and she said, the day, the worst day of her life, and I think we all know which day that was, she went to the cop. She looked him in the face and said, do you know Jesus? And my mouth just dropped. Like, wow. That's unbelievable. That is an inspiration. That is, things like that is, you know, uh, people like that is who I look up to and what I look up to when we go through our own trials. I go through my own trials. I look, I look to that, okay? Are we willing to sacrifice anything or, or, uh, and anything or everything for our faith in Jesus Christ? So difficult times will occur, okay? Difficult times do happen. Uh, Christianity, you don't automatically have an easy life. We have a prayer list. Why do we have a prayer list? Because people need prayers. Because when you become a Christian, God doesn't say, okay, you have an easy road, everything is good. No, things happen. But one thing that I've learned, getting saved at a later age, okay, and being very much part of the world, is your perception of the situation changes very, very rapidly, Okay. You have somebody to lean on, and that's Jesus Christ. So we're going to start in verse 1. Um, so Daniel, he was uh, at a young age, he was brought to Babylon through slavery and rose to the top. Okay? Daniel, is, uh, Daniel and Joseph is one of two um, people in the Bible that you don't hear anything negative said about them. Now, they weren't perfect, obviously. They needed uh, a savior as well. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is as well, but I'm saying... Uh, main characters. Nothing ever is said about them in a, negative, in a negative way. And it's very interesting that those are the two guys that went second in command 
in, in the kingdom, Joseph and Daniel, okay? Today we're going to take a look at Daniel. So let's start in verse 1 in Daniel. Uh, verse 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the prince might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. So the first point I want to kind of uh, touch on is Daniel had a good testimony, okay? That could be me and you. I work in a secular place, and my testimony is very important, okay? Um, I, I don't work around Christians, okay? But they most, if not all of them, know that I'm Christian. It's very important for me to have a certain character, for me to have, um, for me to act in a, in a Christ-like manner, okay? Uh, and you see here in Daniel, he was, he was, he was an exceptional, exceptional person. And he was given the opportunity not only to be the pre one of the three presidents, but he was above the three presidents. So he was second in command. In, in the kingdom. So it was Darius, and then it was, and it was Daniel. And it's unbelievable. This is an 80-plus-year-old man, a Jewish man, in the Persian kingdom, right? Uh, verse 4, Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could, not, they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as, we, as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault in him. Now, I find it unbelievable that they're looking to Daniel's life and they can't find fault in him. I mean, can we say the same? I'd be very hard. That'd be very hard. You know, we're getting an election year, right? 2025. And, you know, everything, all the dirt's coming out. They hire people to find anything and everything, right? We're not perfect people. Obviously, and neither was Daniel. But the way Daniel carried himself um, made uh, Darius, you know, appreciate him and respect him so much enough that he would give him uh, second in command. Okay, now you see that there is when you act a certain way that's totally different from the world. The world doesn't like that. I've noticed that they don't like that. They could call you things like goody two shoes or, oh, you think you're better than me because you're Christian or this or that. And it's like, no, it's not. It's, well, I just don't watch those type of movies. I don't speak that way. I don't do those things. It's a choice that you have, okay? Now, when you make it to the top, there's always going to be those people. The envy, right? There's always going to be those people who don't like where you are or maybe they just don't like how you are or who you are, Okay? Um, so today, let's say if you're tried as a Christian, is there enough evidence to convict you? You've heard that before. Pastors mentioned it before, not that long ago. If you were tried as a Christian, would you be convicted? Is there enough evidence in your life that somebody can say, yeah, that's, that's a Christian. That's definitely a Christian, okay? There was a prolific uh, management author. Uh, he was once asked by someone, if he was a Christian, and his response was as follows, that's for you to tell me. Imagine that. That's for you to tell me. We ought to stick out, right? We ought to be different than, than the rest of the world right. in more ways than one, right? And Daniel was different. He carried himself different, okay? So if a person followed you for the day, would they know you're Christian? I mean, are you confident that if somebody followed you throughout the day, that they would say, yeah, this person, this person is definitely a Christian. He, he, he or she um, is a Christ follower and loves Jesus. Is there enough evidence of that? Or is it just something that it's a Sunday to Sunday thing, right? Moving on to verse 5. Uh, I passed it. Verse 5. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. How many times have you 
been attacked or, or confronted because of what you believe. I'm a very defensive person, meaning if I'm on the soccer field, I don't want anybody to touch my players. I don't want anybody to hit them or do anything or my family members or my church uh, family. I want to be in the line of the fire to protect my circle. Okay, I think that I get that from my mom. And my mom, she, oh man, she can turn into a wacko. If, if <laughs> okay, so um, I take that the same thing. If I'm somewhere and I hear something said about God or Jesus or Christianity or the Bible, what, you, you think I'm going to stay quiet? I think most of you know me enough that I'm not, I would not stay quiet. Respectfully, right? But I'm not going to stay quiet. I'm going to defend it. Because that's my circle. That's, that's, that's me, right? So have people ever attacked you for what you uh, believe? So they can't find anything wrong with Daniel. So they'll say, you know what we're going to do? We're going to find something wrong that goes against Persian law. Okay? And we're going to see how they're going to do this. Okay? Um, Here's, here's something to do. Those people that call you, uh, they're not called crank callers. I don't know what they're called, but they call you and you win a cruise. You get one every week. Here, you want to get rid of them? Here, you can do, it's, it's, it's very simple. Patricia's laughing. She already knows. You talk to them about Jesus. That conversation can go two ways. Click or they're going to get into the conversation. Either way, they're going to hear the gospel. I've done that a couple of times. One guy absolutely lost it, okay? He started, you know, cussing and, and all these things. And I said, well, that's a little, I'm, I'm not swearing at you. I don't, you know. Anyways, but one guy, he kept going with the conversation because he thought he was going to bring back the sale, right? But listen, but I, I do it for, you know, there, there is a reason why I do it. What if it turns into a real conversation? You just told this guy about Jesus Christ. You just gave him the gospel, probably never heard it before, maybe never would have heard it, but he just heard it, and he got paid to hear it, because that's his job, right? In Proverbs uh, 22, chapter 22, verse 1, it says, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver or gold, okay? You matter, okay? You, what you do matters. You are a billboard. You're an ambassador for Christ, it's sometimes I feel like, not pressured, but man, I can't react like everybody else, right? I can't, it's tough. You got the flesh and the spirits fighting, right? Every, every day, but I can't react like the world does. How am I any different than them? If I react like them, they're going to look at me and say, why would I want what you have if you're just like us? Doesn't make sense, right? Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1. A good name is better than precious Ointment. My dad's a good example of this. My dad's not, not uh, a Christian, but my dad is a person that he is, he's very calm, he's, he's funny, he's very nice to people, he's good to people. I've never heard anything, anybody ever say anything wrong about my dad, ever, never. Not in Portugal, not in Canada, not. They always seem to like him, right? He, he hasn't just a nice personality, right? And my parents always ingrained that in me, saying, be careful what you do because you carry our name, okay? A Portuguese community is a tight-knit community, right? So if you're doing some stuff that you shouldn't be doing, people are going to say, well, that's Manuela Ruda's son, and that's Liberta Ruda's son, and he's doing this. I would never want to bring that on to my parents. Shouldn't it be more if you're a Christian? Think about it for a sec. And Believe me, I would never come up standing here to preach something that I would not be preaching to myself. I'm extremely guilty of anything that I would ever, ever uh, bring forward here. Any message I do, it's, it's got to go to me first, 100%, right? So, um, an example is, is I would go somewhere. Not so much now, but in... Uh, my earlier years as, as being a Christian, I would go places and people would ask me, do you want to drink? Any alcohol? I would say, no, I don't. 
And why, are you sick? No, I am if I drink that. In the Portuguese uh, uh, community, it's, a, it's, it's just a regular thing. If you don't drink beer, you must be dying. Something, right? But that's a, a, just a simple way to show that, no, I don't want to consume alcohol, right? You don't have to be over the top to, you know, and say, you shouldn't be drinking it either, each to their own. But, hey, I, choo I choose not to, okay? And people always ask, Why? Well, great. You want to ask why? Let's have a conversation, right? But mind you, I used to drink a lot when I was younger. So when people see that change, they can probably come up to you and say, hey, how come you, what happened? What's the change, right? So it's just a, a, good, way, a good way to open up a uh, conversation. Uh, verse 6, then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said, Thus unto the king, unto him, King Darius, live forever. All, all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the, prince, the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition to any god or man for 30 days, save thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Wow, they're lying. Right? What do they say here? All the presidents and all the princes and all the governors. Daniel's not in there. That's, that happens, guys. Right? They want to get him. All, all of us agreed that we shouldn't pray to anybody else except you, King Darius. So let's, let's make a decree. So you notice how they said all the presidents, princes, governors, and princes. Right? So turn to uh, Genesis chapter 3. Nothing new under the sun. Genesis chapter 3. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made and said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Did he say that? No. He didn't say every tree. He just said a specific tree. But notice how he says it. These guys are doing the same thing. Nothing new under the sun. And the woman said unto uh, the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, plural, but of the fruit of the tree, singular, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. His first, the first try didn't work, so step two. Ah, you're not going to die. She answered it properly. Good for her. But then he took it a step further. People want to take you down. I'm telling you right now, you're a Christian. They want to take you down. And especially I tell the teens all the time, get ready. Because they're going to want to take you down. You're going to be in the universities and everybody's doing this, that, and the other. And you're not. Well, you think you're better than us? Now nah, we'll find something against you. I had a guy when I first went back to construction. He said, uh, you, don't, you don't swear, and I used to cuss bad, okay, really bad. He says, you don't, you don't cuss? I'm like, no, I don't. I mean, it's possible it can slip, right? I'm not, I said, no, it's just not really part of my vocabulary. And he's like, oh, I'm going to catch you one day. That's what he said. I'm going to catch you one day. I'm like, okay, that's nice. Still hasn't, by God's grace, he still hasn't caught me, right? But that was a challenge for me saying, see, they're watching. They're watching, okay? Uh, verse 8 and 9. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing. This is still the, the, uh, the princes and, and, and the uh, presidents, all of them speaking still. Sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alter if not. In Persia, once you make the law, it's done. You cannot change it. In Babylon, it was different. Nebuchadnezzar was above the law, Okay? Persia, sums written, it's done. You cannot change it, okay? Therefore, King Darius uh, signed the writing and the decree, okay? So now things are getting a little, a little tough, right? So second point I want to I speak on is Daniel's prayer routine remained the same considering the obstacles, okay? Super, super important. Now, I want to share... I like statistics, and I like uh, things of that nature. So 
this chart I have in front of me, I should have had something to put up there, but uh, it's talking about prayer and Christians uh, by frequency. Now, I try to narrow it down to born-again Christians, right, because um, <laughs> certain people praying, like you're praying the Hail Mary, not a prayer, okay? It's, you're, you're not doing anything. But um, so for ages 18 to 29, okay, daily prayer, 15%. Okay, pray, uh, pray daily. Weekly, it's a little higher, 22%. Monthly, same, 22%. And seldom or never is 24%. Now, when you go to age 30 to 49, it goes on a, a daily basis, 33%. Weekly, same, 33 And monthly, 36% of, of uh, people in that age bracket would say they pray. I'm going to be honest with you, that's higher than what I, I, I thought. But now you got to ask, what type of prayer? Mormons pray. Actually, Mormons, I checked the chart there. I think they're the highest percentage of people who pray. And then Jehovah's Witness is second. That's kind of scary because those are cults. Uh, I'm, as nice as possible, I'm trying to be. They are, they are uh, cults, okay? 50 to 64, daily 30%. 28%. So all across the board, it goes from 25 to, to about 30%, right? It'd be nice to see that number go up, but we're living in very, very interesting times, right? Where people are, uh, Christians are afraid to uh, pray, pray in public, okay? I worked in a restaurant, Copacabana, so you're flying around the restaurant with meat on the skewer and you're, uh, it's delicious. It's one of the... <laughs> Man, I miss it. I think of that meat all the time. <laughs> you, you, you come to the table, you have meat on the skewer, and you, and you chop the meat, and the people eat it. Yeah. Out of the five, six years that I worked there, three, four, three to four times a week, I've probably gone through thousands, probably over 10,000 people, for sure, that I've, I've seen come to the restaurant and that I've served. Okay, because you've got to go back. Grab a piece of meat, go out, back, forth, back, forth, okay? You know how many times I've seen somebody pray before they eat? I've seen it one time. I'll never forget, table 500 and 501, I come up and it was a group and they were praying. That's it. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people, okay? I've only seen it one time, one time. Uh, there was this other time, there was a couple that did the sign of the cross. Again, it doesn't count, so... One time I ever seen people pray before they eat. It's like, why? Are we embarrassed? Is there not, is, is, are there not Christians coming to this place? I, don't, I didn't understand, right? But it is, it is concerning, uh, concerning for sure. Um, so Daniel's prayer routine remained the same considering the obstacles, okay? So in verse 10, uh, we read here, now when Daniel knew, so he knew, it's not like, it was past, and Daniel just, you know, went about his life and did the same things. No, Daniel knew, okay? Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jesus, uh, sorry, toward Jerusalem. You can say Jesus, too, I guess. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave, and gave thanks before his God, as he did a four time. Okay? Can you imagine if Daniel had Job's friends? Remember Job's friends? They're awful. Imagine. Be like, Daniel, what are you doing? Close, close the windows. Are you, are you okay in the head? Don't be dumb. Close the windows so they don't see you and just pray. Hey, Daniel, just take it down a notch. Do you have to pray three times a day? Just pray once. Go pray somewhere hidden. He could have done that, but he didn't. And, and, it, and it's so interesting how he did it. He didn't even close his window, so I'm assuming the windows are already open. And he's praying towards Jerusalem. And he said, I guess he's thinking, I don't care. Whatever happens, happens. I'm going to pray to my God. I'm going to continue to pray for, uh, to my God. Okay? So Daniel, knowing the outcome would be to choose to continue to pray openly. So um, 
Christians in North America, and I, and I talk about this a lot, and I talk about this in the class a lot, uh, they're, uh, they're afraid to be hated or different, it seems like. You know, have you seen Christianity in another country? I seen one service in Iran. Whoa, like it is something different. I think that's such an investment for, for a Christian to go to another country and see Christianity there. I would love that. Go to, go to, go to Iran and go to a church there and go to, go to China and go to uh, somewhere in Africa to see how it is. Can you imagine how uplifting it would be as a Christian to see? Because some of those people have gone through things that we can't even imagine. Imagine having a church where we're underground. And we have to close these windows. And everybody has to be downstairs. We've got to make this place look abandoned so we don't get arrested. I don't want to say we're not that far from that, but it's possible, guys. Right? It's possible. In John 15, verse, verse 18, chapter uh, 15, verse 18, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If they hate you for being a Christian... Good job. Let me say it again. If they hate you for being a Christian, good job. Not because you're rude to them or mean to them, because you're standing on the truth. And if they hate you because you stand on the truth, then you're doing the right thing, right? So look at the verse I just read. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Verse 19, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. The world doesn't like Christians. You, we're in the way. We are in the way. Okay? They want to do this. This month is a perfect example. You're in the way. But you know what I, you know what I love? I want to have a conversation with these people. Because so many times they have such a, um, a, a wrong perception of Christianity. Like we hate them and we hate everybody. That's not it. We love people, but we give you the truth, and then you take that truth and think that we hate you. We don't hate you. If we hated you, we wouldn't tell you the truth, right? John 16, uh, verse 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. You know what he's saying? is you're going to go through tough times, guys. Things are going to happen. Keep your eyes set on me. Yes, very easy for me to say it. Very different than when you're going through it, okay? We go through trials. We go through tribulations. Do you know what the worst thing you can do? I'll tell you the worst thing you can do when something happens. Stop praying. Stop reading your Bible. Stop coming to church. Stop fellowshipping. You're, you're going to have a very, very hard time. Right. When things get hard, you should pray. You should go to the Bible. Yes, it's difficult. You should go to your brothers, uh, brothers, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? That's who you should go to. This is why God designed it like that. Go to each other for comfort. Okay? Uh, verse 13. Then answered... Uh, they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity, funny that they should mention that, yeah, the, that David, which is the children of the captivity, okay, uh, of Judah, regardeth not thee. That's a lie. O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Again, there's, they're lying, but they're also saying the truth, right? He regardeth not thee. No, no, no. Daniel is very respectful of the king. If he wasn't, why would he be second in command? But again, they're lying, and people will lie when you're not there. Very easy. You know the best way? When I had a situation once when I was, uh, I don't know, was in my, in my early 20s, somebody said something. Somebody told me that this person said this. Okay. This person said, hey, that person said this, said, you said this, that, and the other about me. I said, really? Okay, come with me. Brought the person? Okay. You just said this, this, and that, right? Yes, okay, go ahead. There you go, done. 
situation was done in, in 30 seconds. Someone's lying. It's this guy or that guy. I think they're both lying. I don't know. They're, but it's very easy to, but when you're not there to defend yourself, whew, man, they'll, they'll just make stuff up. They're doing it right here. He's not here to defend himself. Hey, King, you know what? This guy, he has no regard for you, and he has no regard for the law. Well, he has no regard for the law when it interferes with, with God. 100%, they're right. But he does have respect and regard you, king, as long as you're, you're, you uh, don't, don't step over the boundary too, right? Okay? Um, verse 14, okay, sorry. I'm going to use this, uh, this um, I'm going to go to Peter over here. So, Peter in Acts 5 says, we ought to obey God rather than men, okay? That's just how it is. I don't serve man. I'm not, I'm not here to make man happy. I'd like to, right? I don't want people to hate me. I don't want people to, to see me in a certain way. But I'll tell you what, I'm not going to change what I believe is the truth just to make somebody happy. Absolutely not. Did Jesus do that? No, absolutely he didn't. Now your delivery it could be in question, but the truth doesn't change, okay? It's not a subjective thing. It's objective, okay? Verse 14, then the king, uh, then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself. He probably thought, oh man, what did I do? I love Daniel. These guys got me. They got me, right? You, you be very careful who you have around you. Be very, very careful. I mean, these, these guys, right? It's, it's disrespectful what they did to the king. We fooled you on purpose, right? And set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute uh, which the king establisheth may be changed. Hey, just to remind you, king, can't change it. Sorry. That's the law. Oh, I know you're upset about Daniel, and yeah, he, you know, too bad. Right? That's essentially what they're saying. Too bad. You can't change the law. It, it, it's written in stone, okay? They're reassuring the king about the law. So the, the, uh, the next point is Daniel remained faithful, or Daniel trusted God all the way through, okay? So, uh, verse 15, then these men assembled unto the king. I already read that, so verse 16. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, watch what he says here. Thy God, whom thou servest continually, continually, he will deliver thee. Whoa. He's not, he's not a Christian. Okay. But he's showing more faith than some believers, it seems, right? I mean, we can go through the Bible or we can look at ourselves, right? He's saying this, which I found really uh, unbelievable, right? And he and the king was under distress about what was going on, okay? Um, and, then he, he, and then he says that. I find that uh, so appealing. Verse 17, And the stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and the signet of his lords, that the purpose might, be, uh, might not be changed concerning uh, Daniel. It's very interesting how similar that is to uh, Jesus going into the, res uh, the, uh, the tomb. You got the big, a big stone, and then you got the Roman guard on it, right? So kind of the same uh, things going on here. Verse 18, and then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste onto the den of lions. So he was in great distress, okay? He was tossing and turning all night thinking, man, I cannot believe I had to put Daniel into the lion's den because of a law that I got fooled into, into passing, so it kind of says something about the character 
uh, of, of Darius at the same time, okay? And we jump down to uh, verse, verse 20, and it says, When he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, He threw him in a den of lions, guys. Lions. Hungry lions. Plural. You ever seen a lion close up? That's a big animal. That's a scary animal, okay? Um, and the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Okay? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever, showing him respect. Still showing him respect. Man, Daniel, uh, he's one of the guys, like, wow. My God, notice he says, my God, has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they have no hurt, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. I've, it's very interesting that he didn't say that before he went into the lion's den. Right? He didn't say, hey, uh, because he wasn't innocent. He did break the law. He knows that. But he still went through it. But he's saying it here, hey, I didn't do anything wrong against you. I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do as a Christian. And that's a good way to think, guys, that we have to just keep continue doing what, what we're uh, called to do, okay? No matter where it is, right? Uh, so Daniel puts, uh, Daniel puts his wants. Sorry, I, I, I got to reword that. Daniel put God's uh, wants before his comforts, okay? It's about what God wants, not what I, what I want. Sometimes that's hard. Sometimes that's hard. Hey, how about that time? It's like, ah, should I give that person a track? Oh, uh, that's kind of awkward. Oh, I'm at Tim Horns. This guy looks angry. Should I give him a track? Oh, I don't know. Or should I talk to this person? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a little different than what we're seeing here, but right? It, it kind of makes sense. It's, we're, we're living in a different world, right? It's very tough. Okay, it's tough. But as soon as you take that first step, you're good. You take that first step, it's hard, and, and, and then you're okay. Daniel was at peace in the den of lions. Sometimes trials will give us the greatest peace. The world does not understand that. It will. It will give us the greatest peace. You go through something, it's hard, and then when you're done, and you, and you start to think, and it's like, okay, that makes sense. You know, we got great peace. Me and Rita after, got great peace. It's like, hey, this is what God wants. That's it. Just, that's it. I don't understand. I, I'm not, I'm not, maybe I'm not supposed to understand. Let's just keep going. That's it, right? It was more dangerous to live in the palace than it was to spend one night in the den of lions. Why? Because God was with Daniel. Okay, so in, in Matthew 20, 20, it says, Lo, I am with you always, always. He's always with you. Wherever you're walking, he's there. So we can, we can take comfort and say, ah, oh, I'm good. I'm good. He, he's with me. If this situation is going to happen, it's me who has to try to um, understand, not understand, but just be okay with it, say, leave it to God. He understands. If I don't understand now, I'm going to understand after. Let's just get through it. Right? Again, let's use that. Use the body of Christ. Use the scriptures. Use prayer. Okay? The best place you can be is where God wants you to be. So there was a man, he was, he was arrested for nine years, innocently arrested. Innocently arrested, nine years. He was a preacher. What did he do? He did Bible study three times a day in prison, and he led almost 700 men to Christ. I mean, the Christian life does not end as a result of our circumstances, right? It continues, okay? Would he want to go do it again? Probably not, but maybe God sent him there 
for a reason. Maybe those guys, that's the only way they were going to get saved. It's through him. Maybe now, because he went there, he can relate to people who went to prison. Opens up a whole new ministry, right? You get a sickness. It's terrible. But maybe now you have a ministry where you can talk to people who have that same sickness, that don't have God. There's a ministry. I think we need to look at, look at it, look at it in, that, in that way is, this happened. What do, you want me to, what do you want me to see, God? Maybe this is opening up a ministry. Maybe this is teaching me something, right? We always have to look for that. I think it's so important. First thing we do, instead of saying, oh, getting down on ourselves is, okay, what am I supposed to learn? And for me, it's hard because I'm a man, one. I'm a married man, two, and I'm Portuguese. Sometimes we're, you know, the head is hard, right? So I tell God, please make it obvious. He knows how I am. Maybe a little more clues. I'm not getting it, okay? <laughs> right? So the Christian life does not end as a result of our circumstances, yet it is an opportune time to shine in the midst of darkness. The darker it is, the more noticeable you'll be. Right? Because we're, we're the children of the light. So example that Pastor Tricky mentioned today, that I already had here, so he copied me, but uh, <laughs> Paul and Silas, wow, they're in jail, they're singing, they're praying, they're praising, in jail. That is something, man. If all Christians can do that, could you imagine the change in this world? I want what that person has. We got a barbecue in a week, guys. We have a barbecue in a week. Man, we can have an impact just the way we are towards people. I mean, don't hug them right away. Some people don't like hugs, right? But I'm saying, like, people can be like, man, these, what's going on with these people? They're so nice. Make them want to hug you, <laughs> right? If you're not a hugger, I mean, I like to hug. So what, what does your den of lion look like, okay? We live, we live in a den of lion now. We're in the lion's den, okay? The Bible says, The devil is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking who, whom he may devour, okay? So... Are we proceeding with caution in not giving him a reason to set his attention on us? Are you giving him a reason to, to pay attention to you? To say, oh, I don't know, this one looks like, yeah, dabbling into this, that, I'll use that. He's, <laughs> I, I would not want to challenge him one bit, okay? Don't give a reason. Don't open those doors. Don't open those doors, Okay? And Christianity is not a switch we can just turn on and off, okay? It's what we are. It's essential, right? It, it's, it's, a, it's our being. Why does God allow us to go through certain things? Getting someone, um, it's, like the analogy is kind of, I, I kind of see it this way. I don't, maybe I'm wrong, but you know when you get somebody a gift and you're so excited because you know you nailed it. I forgot, there was one time I gave Rita, I was uh, giving Rita a gift and I nailed it and I knew it. <laughs> She's usually better than me. She's good. But I, I was like, oh, I got it. She's, and you just love the anticipation. I got you something good. What is it? You'll see. And she usually guesses. And that sucks because I'm like, oh. I'm like, no, it's not that. I'm like, God, I'm not lying. I'm just trying to, you know, okay. But it's that anticipation, right? And God sometimes will allow us to go through these things because he knows what, how we're going to come out on the other side. He knows. He's like, you're going to grow. Watch. Just trust me. Okay? A good analogy is God is the helicopter, okay, and you're on a raft or, or a canoe, and you're going down the river, and there's a fork in the road. You can go left or right, and the left side looks really good. Okay, and the guy in the helicopter says, no, no, stay right. Uh, right doesn't look too good. No, stay right. Left looks very good. Not a lot of waves. It looks nice and smooth. Trust me, stay right. You go left. And then 200 meters from there, there we go. You're going down, right? Why? Because he sees, God sees the past, present, and future. He sees what's ahead. Because if you stuck to the right, it looks a little bumpy, but then it gets good, and you're not going to go off a cliff. And that's where we come in. We have to be open and listen to him, okay? 
The closest a non-believer will be to Christ will be when they are getting judged by him. Think of that for a sec. If you don't have a heart for people, think of that. The closest they'll ever be to Jesus Christ will be when, he, when they are getting judged by him. It's a very scary thought. <coughs> so uh, another thought is imagine, imagine if everybody's mirror uh, turned into an x-ray machine, right, to check the inside of someone, right, instead of the outside, okay? So when times get tough, here, uh, another example here is uh, John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist, what a name he had, right? In Matthew uh, chapter 11, verse 2, Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Jesus Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art, art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do and hear and see. If you question God, okay, don't, put, don't, don't be too hard on yourself. I'm pretty hard on myself, okay? And sometimes I have to be like, hey, you know, I am human. John the Baptist questioned it. And I think of this. Could you imagine starving? I've never, I've said I'm starving, but I've never actually starved, right? Could you imagine what somebody will do for food when they're starving? Could you only imagine, right, when somebody is in a situation like John, John was probably so distressed that he's like, is this the guy? Even he's questioning it, which is, it, it, it comforts me because it's like, wow, even he questioned it. John, the Baptist, right, the greatest prophet. But it's okay because if you have that 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 relationship with God, it's okay to talk to him. Say, God, I don't know right now what's going on here. I'm having difficulties trusting you. Please help me. It's tough, okay? And uh, Revelation uh, 12, 10. Satan accuses you constantly. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of, uh, of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast out, which accused them before our God day and night. He is always on, he's accusing. He's like, hey, did you see what Fabio did over there? Did you see what that person thought of? Hey, see how that person was acting in church? Always, accuser. Yes. Okay. But guess what? You're born again. God's like, I don't see it. He puts on the married man glasses. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't, see, I don't see it. You go in the fridge. I'm bad. Rita thinks something's wrong with me. I can't find anything in the fridge. <laughs> Rita, the steak. She's like, it's in the corner. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I seen it. Yeah, I know. No, I didn't. I didn't see it. I don't know. I just don't see it, okay? <laughs> Pray for her. Uh, then... Then was the king, uh, verse 23, Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the, uh, out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of, out of the den and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. What did Pastor Tricky share today? In, in uh, Paul and Silas' story, the jailer, what do I have to do to get saved? Believe. That's it. Believe, right? It's a beautiful, beautiful word. I love that word. And the king commanded, and they brought those men, which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the lions, into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. That's a, a, a wow. And the lions had the mastery of them and break all their bones in pieces, or every, uh, or ever they came at the bottom of the den. Okay. I wonder how that went. Was it like a lineup to the lion's den or what was going on? You had to take a ticket and wait your turn. We'll get you in there. I don't know, but that's a lot of guys, right? Verse 25, then the king, then King Darius wrote unto all the people, nations, and languages that dwell in the earth, peace be uh, multiplied unto you. I make a decree. Huh, interesting. That happened a couple chapters before, right? 
I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble in fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God. By the way, it's the same God as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, and, and steadfast forever and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. Verse 27, he delivered and rescueth uh, and worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in the earth. Who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? In verse 28, so this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of uh, Cyrus the Persian. Okay, so I heard this, and this is, this is unbelievable. A, uh, a Christianity that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. A Christianity that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. And you can take that test in so many different ways. You can take it testing it if Christianity is true. You can take it testing uh, about situations and what happens and how we come out of it, okay? So in, in closing... 26 million people a year die, okay? Every second, 1.8. So there's uh, close to two people die every second, okay? Per minute, 106. So how many people died since the beginning of this sermon? Lots, okay? Per hour, 6,392. Per day, 153,000. Per month, 4 million, okay? I'll tell you what, if you are, if you are, a born-again Christian, and you want to tell somebody about Jesus, you got job security forever. There is a lot of people out there. And Christianity, and it, I, I do air quotes because sometimes it could be, right, it, it, it could be something that's not exactly Christianity. It's, it's sloping a little bit, right? But there is so many people. We can only start within here, Okay. Here, here's a challenge for the week, and I challenge the church for this. We have a week until the barbecue. I challenge myself and the church for one day, if you're able to, to fast for one day. And for that day, you pray for the visitors that are coming to our barbecue. And you ask God to please open their hearts, open their minds, give you the wisdom, give you the courage, give you whatever God sees fit. For us to show the love of Christ and the gospel to these people, okay? Let's pray the whole week. Let's take one day out of the week where we can fast and think about these things, okay? Uh, 1 John 4, 4 says, Greater is he that is in you than, uh, than he that is in this world. So he went to the den of lions, okay? He wasn't there by himself. Greater is he that is in you. When Noah went into the ark, God said, come in to the ark. Not go into the ark. He said, come in. Where does God have to be there? Where does God have to be for him to say, come into the ark? He has to be inside with them. God was with Daniel. That's why Daniel was protected. He said, okay, you're going to abide in me. I'm going to abide in you. Let's go to the lion's den. Okay? Safest place you can be in God's will. So the leader of El Salvador, and I'll, and I'll bring it to a close in, in a few moments. I've seen an interview of the leader of El Salvador. Wow, what an interview. I cannot, I couldn't believe it. And if you guys don't know it, you'll, he was interviewed by a very well-known name, reporter, whatever, journalist, very well-known in the States. He, he was a, he's a conservative. And this guy had to go down to interview this, this uh, president of El Salvador, okay? And I'm familiar with a lot of Salvadorians growing up in Hamilton. There's a, a lot of them, okay? This man, in three years, El Salvador was the most dangerous country in the world. In the world, the most dangerous country. And a lot of that is because a lot of people would go to the states from El Salvador, they created gangs, like MS-13 is a big one, and then they get deported back to El Salvador, and poor small country of El Salvador had to deal with these people. And that happened for years and years and years. Now, in three years, this man, I forgot his name, I think his last name is Bukele. Bukele. El Salvador went from the worst country in the world, crime rate, okay, 
to the safest country in the Western Hemisphere in three years. I think there was over 70,000 arrests of gang members. Watch this. Do you know how many citizens died in, seven, in those arrests in the country? Zero. Not one citizen died making those arrests. Only eight officers slash army personnel died. That's a miracle. You know why? Let me read you two quotes from him. I don't know, again, I don't know enough about him. I've seen this interview. i seen, and I was like, wow, what, what a leader. He said this, if you win the spiritual war, it will affect, it will reflect in the physical war. His plan of turning the country around, he had uh, three, three uh, points. Guess what his first one was? And the guy, oh, the guy's uh, Tucker Carlson was the guy who interviewed him. And you can see Tucker Carlson, he he's, uh, claims to be Christian. He was, like, floored. Like, he couldn't believe it. He kept asking him, like, how? Watch this. Number one thing he did, listen very carefully. The number one thing he did, this president of El Salvador, I quote, said this. I'm going to ask God for wisdom. That's what he said. That was the first plan of action. Him and his cabinet prayed for wisdom. You think you're going to have 70,000 arrests without anybody of gang members and no civilian dying without God being in it? Never. If you don't think that's a miracle, you are out of your mind. That's what he said. Sounds familiar, right? There's somebody else in the Bible that asked for wisdom. And look what God did with him, right? I'm going to ask God for wisdom. And the guy interviewing him, Dr. Carlson, said, you guys, like, you guys prayed, like, all together? He's like, yeah. He's like, everybody was okay with it? He's like, oh, yeah. Pretty much all, uh, they're all believers. <laughs> Three years, turned a country from the worst country in the world to the safest country in the Western Hemisphere. If that's not God, good luck explaining that. Daniel is a great example to us today. Daniel had a good testimony. Daniel had prayer routine that never changed. And Daniel was faithful to God regardless of the circumstances. Can we say the same about us? And if we can't, let's work towards that. Okay? Uh, this is, it's, it's, it's not rocket science. It's always, it's always the same. Okay? Satan wants to devour you. He can't have your soul but he can make you a bad example. The only way to fight against that is right here. That's it. If, you're, if, if you try it any other way, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. We have to look to God for the answers. We have to put our faith and trust. Trials and tribulations are going to happen. We're living in a time where it's going to get worse and worse and worse. But we have to be focused, okay? Focus on God. Focus on Jesus Christ. Trust in what he can do. And trust what he, he, um, what he can do and what he will do. And in the end, it's all going to work out, okay? We're going to go to heaven. Some of us are going to have pet dinosaurs. I'm going to have a T-Rex, okay? It's, it's, we have to endure here. But we have to lean on each other, okay? We have to lean on each other. Think of Daniel. Daniel did not change. He's like, I'm not changing. God comes first, right? I'm going to lean on God. I'm going to trust him even into the lion's den. I, that faith, I don't, that's, that's, that's incredible. But we can pray for that. There's people here who have great faith. Great faith. That I, <laughs> again, it's inspirational to me. But if we, if we continually look, look to our creator, okay, look to our Savior and say, I don't understand. Please walk me through this. Be with me. Help me. Open my eyes. Open my heart, Lord. Okay? Let's pray. Holy Father, Lord, we're so grateful to be here, Lord, in your house. And we thank you that we can learn from Daniel as uh, such, a, such an exceptional example of how to be in the world that we live in, Lord. Our testimony is so important, Lord. 
And I know I'm speaking to a group of people that, uh, in my opinion, uh, they're, they're exceptional in my eyes. They're uh, incredible people. Um, Lord, help us to continue to, to, to move forward and to, to, to show the light in a dark, dark world, Lord, and help us to uh, continuously go to you for prayer, always to go to you for prayer, for anything, Lord, and that constant relationship and that constant communication and fellowship with you, Lord. And Father, help us to have the faith that whatever trials, tribulations, whatever happens in our life, the first thought that we can get is, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I put my faith in you, Lord. And Father, if there's anybody hearing my voice, Lord, and they don't, they're not confident that they're saved, they don't know, or they don't, uh, they're not sure what, what it's all about, Lord, I pray that they can, they can come and ask someone. Come and ask, what is salvation? What is being born again, Lord? If there's no one saved here today, I pray that they get saved, Lord, that they put their faith and trust in you and accept you as their Lord and Savior. And become a new person, Lord. Father, I thank you for this time, Lord. I pray that you, that you guide us, Lord. And that this week we are much in prayer. And that we fast for, for the barbecue that's coming, Lord. And that we can be the greatest example that we can be of what the love of God is. Father, be with us this week, Lord. And I pray for your blessing upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Fabio. You are an inspiration to this church and appreciate you, the way you simplify the, that message from a familiar character. I love Daniel. I love his story. And uh, I love you, Brother Fabio. Thank you so much for sharing that truth with us. You know, Brother Fabio sent Pastor and I a picture uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he was studying for his sermon t today. It was going to be last Sunday. And the picture was because Emilio was also studying on the other side of the table with the Bible open. But I zoomed in and I saw that his sermon said, Daniel 6 sermon. So the next day I asked him, I said, hey, Fabio, what's your title for your sermon tomorrow? I said, for instance, I'm preaching extensively on Daniel chapter 6. And what are you preaching on? And he said, seriously, you're preaching Daniel chapter 6? <laughs> I said,